Welcome to Kevin's Food for Thought. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us reach as many people as possible. And now here is your host, Kevin Moore. This is part two of To the Catholic Church. Um, I was asked by some people to dig deeper, so that's what I did. Uh, let's go ahead and read <clears throat> some of their comments. You lack knowledge and understanding, brother. Catholics know that Jesus is the door, and he is the only way. And with regards to Mass... The Bible is read at part of the Mass, chapters of the Old Testament, Psalms, and New Testament are read at the Holy, Homily, brings it all together. So Catholics hear the word of God spoken at every Mass, and Catholics don't worship Mary. Please stop spreading lies. Lies are from the devil. Thank you. I'm not even shocked by this comment, as I've been sitting on this message for two years. Kevin, what are words? Words are a representation of meaning. Okay. <clears throat> you and I could read Hamlet, and each of us could have different interpretations on what Shakespeare meant in certain passages. If we ask Shakespeare, he could tell us the meaning of the words he wrote. Interpretation of words is key here, Kevin. This is why we have 25,000 Protestant denominations, all with different interpretations of the word of God. But God has a meaning for his words. This is why we need to sit This is a long one. This is a long one. I'm probably not going to read it all. This is why we need to... The seat of Peter. The steward like the Old Testament. When David would leave the city. Had his steward sit in his place. And keep things according to his wishes. Blessed are you, Simon of Jonah, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Whatever you bind on heaven shall be bound on earth. No, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you make loose on earth will be made loose in heaven. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Dig deeper, Kevin. The church you despise is the very church that Christ built. And its doctrines and meanings of scriptures have not changed for 2,000 years. Well, okay. I'm not surprised by any of that. Hmm. Let's go to the first one you brought up, Matthew sixteen eighteen. But instead of starting it at 18, let's start it at 14 or 15. Okay, so let's do a little bit higher back so we know the full story of what's happening here and what has been said previously. And not just pick here and there. Matthew sixteen fifteen, He saith unto them, But who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, 
and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It doesn't sound like he's calling Peter the rock. He asked Peter, who do people say that I am? And Peter said, you're the Christ. Christ is making a claim to be the rock. He's not calling Peter the rock. He does tell Peter that he's going to give them the keys to the heaven in 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the ki keys of the kingdom of God. And whosoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Well, what do keys do? They lock and unlock doors, right? So if Peter is in fact the rock, then explain Matthew sixteen twenty two. Then Peter took him and begged and begin to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Wow. So the guy that just is the Catholic Church's rock, just got rebuked by Jesus Christ because he didn't understand still what Christ's job was. He just told them that he's going to die on the cross. And he tells them, no, you're not. Basically, I'll protect you. <laughs> okay. If you were going to pick a rock, why wouldn't you pick somebody that didn't mess up? Like John the Baptist. I'm not bashing Peter. I like Peter. I can relate to Peter. I can relate to Paul. I can relate to David. <clears throat> okay. Now Matthew seventeen fifteen. Let's read that because it's around the same time of what's happening here. Lord. Have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, <clears throat> remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? Now, where am I at right now? Do you have your Bible out? Is it an NIV? Catholic approved NIV? Probably. Matthew 17, verse 21. Jesus tells us how to rebuke that lunatic spirit. 1721. How be it this kind goeth not out by, but by prayer and fasting. Why is that removed out of so many Bibles? The how to do it is removed. Doesn't that seem demonic? Because Jesus asked us to do these things and it's been taken out. I think it's demonic. We have a lot of verses. 
you probably really not going to watch the entire video. Most of you Catholics out there, you're probably not. You're probably going to turn it off and skip to something else that strokes your Catholicism or your pride or whatever. Or another video that you want to be angry about. Because that's probably why you clicked on this one. It's because you saw the title and like, oh, this guy's probably going to say something against us. My church. I'm speaking the truth. This is not my interpretation. I think comparing this to Hamlet is, well, there's so many things I could say right now, but I'm not going to. Uh, if you want to plainly take what Jesus said, then maybe you should do that and realize that Peter is not the rock. I know you think that he was your first pope, but he wasn't. Jesus is not talking about a building. And Jesus did not establish the Catholic Church. In fact, the Catholic Church was established 300 years after Peter died. <laughs> Let's go to Deuteronomy 32.4. Speak 32, 3, and 4. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. He work, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Hmm, why back in Deuteronomy? And rock is capitalized. That's kind of strange. <clears throat> I wonder who's he who she's talking about here. Maybe we'll find out with more reading. Mm -hmm. Let's go to David, since you were talking about Psalms. 118.22 The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. Hmm. Well, that's two. That is pointing to God being the rock. And Jesus made claims that he was God, right? He did. So that's two against Peter. Let's go to Daniel. Something a little more prophetic. Second Daniel 35. There was the iron and the clay, the brass and the silver, and the gold broken into pieces together and become like <clears throat> become like the chaff of the summer. And the wind carried them away. That no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain. And filled the whole earth. The whole earth. So a stone smashed the kingdoms. The statue of the man that King Nebuchadnezzar had. What a prophetic dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had and how Daniel was used to bring it all together and, and the importance of Daniel. And even in Matthew, Jesus points to Daniel and tells him that, who, you know, he is a prophet and he tells him that he wrote, who wrote Daniel? Well, Daniel did. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So you can imagine King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream that this big rock falls from outer space and smashes the kingdoms. The bronze, the silver, the gold smashes it. And the rock hits the ground 
and it grows into a giant mountain that takes over the whole earth. Does Jesus not say that his when he comes back, that someday his kingdom is going to be established on this earth forever and ever? The whole earth? Is that not Jesus Christ right here in Daniel 2.35? Is that three strikes against Peter now? Not against Peter himself, but Peter being the rock. Hmm. Technically, that's four if you read more of Matthew. Jesus tells him himself that he's the rock. He's making a claim. So technically, we're at four. Deuteronomy, Psalms, Daniel, and Matthew. Okay. I guess 1 Corinthians 10.4. And we'll go a little higher. 10.2. And we were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all drink the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink from... For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. That's pretty plain to me. But okay. We'll hit one more. Just one more. And then I have notes. First Peter. 2.7 Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them, which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient. Whereunto also they were appointed. Hmm. That's pretty plain too, to me. Wow. Where in the Bible does it say anything about celebrating a Mass? Doing a mess. In fact, doesn't Jesus tell us not to be like the heathen and be repetitive? And there's also something that neither one of you mentioned in your comments, and that's uh, the thief on the cross. Why is that? Well, how come every time I ask a Catholic that, I can't explain it? You think that I despise you. You think that I despise your church. I don't. What I despise is the fruit that the church produces. And currently, I know a few Catholics that are pretty upset about what the Pope has been saying recently around the world. There is no peace with Catholicism. I know a lot of Catholics, and they all suffer from, from condemnation. The only person that can bring peace is Jesus Christ. And if you're a Catholic and you don't have peace, then do you in fact have who you say that you're worshiping? Because let's get real. If you're praying to anybody but Jesus Christ or God the Father, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Read the Bible. Read your NIV Bible and try to figure it out. I'm, I'm sorry, but <laughs> the Bible is plain. I just gave you all of those examples of why Jesus is the rock. I gave you, I read seven verses, seven different things. <clears throat> and now I think I left one out. I'm going to have to check my. My notes. No, I didn't leave one out. 
But I just think it's interesting that even Peter is hinting at the fact that he's not the rock. And let's stop talking about... 25,000 different Protestant denominations. That's not even a true statement. I'm sorry. It's not. I don't know of 25,000 different denominations to you. I know that there's a lot. And I also know that, just like the Bible says, most people are going to hell. There's only peace with Jesus Christ. I would also say, what fruit does the Catholic Church in Rome produce? What do they produce? Jesus said that we could judge others by the fruit that they bear. Basically make up our own mind about people. And if we can't, you know, correct them. And if they don't listen, then okay. Then they don't listen then you're not going to listen. You've probably not watched any of my other videos. No, and that's fine. Whatever. You probably only clicked on it because it said a Catholic Church. And that's what, you know, you're into. Uh, but what fruit does the Catholic Church produce? How many priests have been caught molesting children? How many people in Hollywood are into pedophilia? So if your church is so perfect, and Jesus built it, why is it in such shambles? Why does it produce fruit of the opposite of what it used to preach? I say used to preach because the Pope came out recently and said that transgender is okay, even though Jesus Christ himself said it wasn't. You don't remember Sodom and Gomorrah? I'm sorry, it's not. It's not okay with him. Sexual morality is not okay with God. It's not permitted. Lots of things are not permitted that we do. The Pope also recently said that uh, there's many, many doors to heaven. And Jesus said he was the only one. So why are you as a Catholic not angry at that fact? Why are you not holding your priests and your Pope accountable for their terrible fruit that they're producing? They're not producing any good fruit. Look at the vast wealth that the Vatican has. Look at the vast wealth that the Romans, the Roman Catholics have. Look at Rome. Go look at the Vatican. Look at the vast wealth. What are they doing with that? Besides moving priests around here and there to this state and that state and this country and this country. And moving them around every time they're caught molesting thousands of kids. Would you say that that is godly? Or would you say that that is evil? Because we all know that Satan himself loves affecting children. He knows it bothers God. Jesus is the answer to everything. You're not producing good fruit in Catholicism. You're not. You can't buy your way out of hell. You may be able to... Uh, n none of you... You're not dumb. I'm not going to call you dumb. You're obviously not. Those were good comments. They're wrong, but they were good. The Vatican Archives... What about all of the history, all of the relics, all of everything that the Vatican is protecting? They're not protecting anything. They're keeping people from stuff. The Pope is the supreme leader in the Catholic Church, right? Basically. And yet you guys are afraid to speak out against evil. It's evil. It's... 
how many millions of children have been affected by the Catholic Church in a horrible way. And you're going to sit there and tell me that the Catholic Church in its in all entirety is good. Yet the Vatican has enough wealth to cure a lot of homelessness around the world. Do they not? Why don't they do it? Why don't they do it? How can their priests keep being caught with children? It's bad fruit. That's the core that Jesus talks about. If they're producing bad fruit, you know they're not of me. If they're producing good fruit, you know that they're of me. They're loving. They're kind. They're going to tell you the truth, whether it hurts your feelings or not. You think that I'm sitting here hating on you? I'm sitting here trying to get you to see that what you're involved in is evil and not good. And you're going to sit there and tell me to stop spreading lies. Just like Satan bringing railing accusations against me, somebody that you don't even know, that I'm spreading lies like the devil. That's fine. I can take it. What saddens me is that you didn't put your pride down. You didn't search the word for yourself. And instead you asked me to dig deeper. What you don't know is that that Bible that's sitting on my desk next to my coffee, I learned how to read out of. And I've been reading it my entire life. That doesn't make me holy. It doesn't make me better than anybody. At anything. It just means that I've been studying for a very long time. And if you're going to come at me, you better pick up your Bible. I'm not mad at you. I actually prayed for both of you that made those comments a lot this week. And I immediately started studying. And I was going to reply to both of you. But I decided not to that instead because you can't get somebody's true emotions over a text. So I thought that uh, I would say it in person. And I had already been planning on doing a part two. I don't even know if it's ended here. <clears throat> like I said, I've been sitting on this for <laughs> two years. I've been wanting to talk about the Catholic Church for so long. But I've always been told no. I've always been led in a different direction. I never knew what I was waiting for. And I would always come back to this. I'm passionate about this. I don't want people to die and go to hell. And that's exactly what's happening. Sorry, if you don't like it and you don't like what I have to say, you can choose not to believe it. And you can choose to walk your own way. And good luck. I hope I see you there. I hope you change your mind. I hope you dig. I hope that I've pricked it. God has pricked your heart and wants you to dig into the word. I pray that he opens your eyes and draws you to him. Because you going through the bells and the whistles every service, you talk like I haven't been to Catholic did I haven't been to a Catholic church. I married into a Catholic church. I got married in a Catholic church. I did the marriage prep classes. And you know what happened at the marriage prep classes in a Catholic church? The priest loved me. He loved me. Why? Because I knew the word. He said, you don't just like, he's like, I'm just, you know, I'm a little impressed. So I'm like, okay. And I'm like, um, God, please help me because I don't know where this is going. And he said, well, a lot of people can quote a little bit of the Bible but he said, you can quote a lot of the Bible, but what makes you different than my average person that comes in here for marriage prep classes and my co the people in my congregation is, not only do you know the word deeply, but you live it. To you, it's more of a lifestyle. It's, it, it's in you. 
and you live it daily. I almost cried. I never looked at it that way. I almost cried in that priest's office. And he complimented me on my face, on my walk. He complimented me, and it was unexpected. Um, I didn't know what to expect going into his office. But I found myself really enjoying talking about the Bible with him. And sometimes, every time I would pray, God help me know what to say. Because I went in there wanting to not just do the marriage prayer classes which I didn't want to do at all. But I'm like, okay, if I have to go, I want to talk to this guy. I want to talk to him about the Bible because I know what I believe. I know what the truth is, and I want to know what he believes. A, a person that you know, preaches the way that he does. <clears throat> but a lot of times, when I would speak, he would sit back in his chair, and he wouldn't know what to say. And I think that me knew, knowing the word as well as I do, he doesn't experience that on a daily basis. He knows that his congregation doesn't know the word the way that they should. He knows that. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I enjoyed uh, talking to the priest about the Bible. But there was a lot of times when I was sitting in his congregation and I would correct... <laughs> what he was saying. He never knew it. The people next to me never knew it. But I was the the heathen in the church because I didn't splash water on myself. I didn't do their cross thing. And I didn't get up and down on my knees. There's a reason why Catholics always have problems with their knees. It's just ritualistic. I'm sorry it is. Christ preached against that. Who did Christ, who did Jesus preach against the most? The chief priests, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the ones that had all the religion. It wasn't the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church wasn't around. But similar, it was the ones that worshipped the law and not God, which is what Catholicism is. I'm sorry, I know you're going to hate this video. I know you're not going to like it. I know your heart's pricked. I know that you're probably angry with me. What I would ask you to do is put down your pride and get dig into the word yourself. Stop telling other people to dig deeper, and you dig deeper. We're not talking about Hamlet. We're talking about the Holy Word of God. Your soul is on the line. Time is wrapping up. The Pope, the Pope and the priest are not producing good fruit. I know a man that suffers from so much condemnation, a Catholic man. Raised his entire life Catholic. And he suffers so much condemnation. That sometimes when a joke is said. He'll laugh and then he'll get quiet. Because he thinks every tiny little thing that he does. Is going to send him to hell. And the priest can offer him. His priest can offer him. No peace. Why is there no peace in Catholicism? Why can't his priest guarantee that he's going to heaven? 
that he his answer is pray harder do more penance rededicate your life do all these things all of these things by yourself with your priest you do all of these things you do all of these works and then your life is just a little bit better your your odds have improved like you might win the lottery you know if you do that and that's false that's exactly what christ preached against you can't argue against that fact by arguing against that fact you're arguing with what god said you're arguing with what jesus said not me <laughs> you're not disagreeing with me you're disagreeing with the bible i know the word I've consumed it since I was a child. Here's a story I've never shared with with anybody, I don't think. No, I think I have. I think I'll skip it. I'm not perfect. And neither are you. The difference between me and you is... You think that a priest can get you to heaven. You think that you have to do all of these steps like some pyramid scheme to get to heaven. And I know that I suffer from no condemnation any longer. That debt was paid by Jesus Christ. He took the debt. He became the payment for sin. It's a free gift. Accept it. You'll know that you truly have God. That you're truly doing the things you should be doing. When you wake up one day and you think, if I die today, I know where I'm going. That's the peace that Jesus was talking about. That's what we're talking about. There's no condemnation in that. Satan wants people to believe that they're condemned, that they're going to hell. And they'll get so tired of that that they'll fall away from their faith. That's what he wants. The Pope has said many things that <laughs> seems off the wall and blatantly against the Word of God. Even the NIV version. And they've removed a lot of stuff from the NIV. Sorry. They have. If you don't believe me, you could go out and buy a King James Version and put it next to yours and see all of the things that have been taken out, edited, or removed. Man, it's a... I read out of it in MV when I was like... Well, I tried to read out of it when I was like 13. And when I was 18, I was trying to use that because it was easier to understand. In my ignorance, I wanted to, I wanted a dumbed down version. Instead of, you know, believing what the Bible says, that I should be filled with the Holy Spirit. To be able to read it and understand it. If you had a a war manual, right? Say you're a g big general and you're going to war. And there's only one way that you could get a document, a game plan to your troops. And that was to put it out for everybody, even the enemy to see. What would you do? Wouldn't you spread the word, a key, how to unlock the word? That's what God did. He gave the Bible for the entire world, for anybody to believe. But you have to be spirit-filled. <laughs> 
You have to be filled with the Spirit of God. You have to come to Him. You have to believe on Jesus Christ. You have to believe that there's no condemnation. You have to believe that it was everything Jesus did on the cross and the rose again on the third day. And you have to fully believe that and accept that. To be baptized with the Holy Spirit. To 100%, 100% believe that you don't have to be baptized as a child in order to, to have righteousness. You don't. You don't have to be baptized as an infant. That's supposed to be a choice of a sound mind. A mature mind is supposed to come to Christ and be baptized. But what does the baptism you know, symbolize? That you're being born again. Your sins are washed away. All of that, yeah. But... It's also, you're putting out there for everybody to see, this is who I believe, this is the choice that I'm making. You're telling the world, I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm going to be baptized, just like John baptized, just like Jesus was baptized by John. John didn't know the significance you know, Jesus asked him to baptize him. And he said, I have a need to be baptized by thee. Why was that? Because John didn't understand that he was baptized with the Holy Spirit the day that he was conceived. John the Baptist did no wrong. If you were going to pick a rock, <laughs> why wouldn't you pick a good one like John the Baptist? You know, I was thought that John the Baptist getting killed the way that he did was horrible. It wasn't. That was John's reward. What a great reward to get your head lobbed off for Christ. <laughs> wow. I don't hate Catholics. I don't hate anybody. What I hate is sinful I hate corruption. I hate lies. That's what I hate. And I know that there's so many people, billions, millions, billions probably around the world that are being lied to and they're being led astray. But I love you. <laughs> I pray for you. I'm not mad at your comments. Normally I would delete them, but I decided not to. I'm not gonna, not unless they're really hateful, I'm just gonna leave them set there. Because if somebody, another Catholic, wants to see your comment, they can. If somebody who believes like me wants to comment on your comment, that's between you two. That has nothing to do with me. But know that I don't despise Catholic people. I have many people in my extended family that I enjoy seeing. And they know how I believe. And they still love me. Try it. Try love. For me to hate you is to sit here and to never preach to you. To never try to get you to see the truth. To get you to Dig in the Bible yourself and you'll realize, wow, there's a lot of things that I do that aren't correct. I've been there. I've done it myself. I'm not saying my church is perfect. It's not. For me to say nothing, that's hate. You know, that's for me to despise you. I don't. I'm speaking up. I know that there'll be friction. I know that people will hate me. I know that they won't agree with me. But at the end of the day, for me to practice what I preach is to tell you the truth. There's no good fruit in Catholicism. Judge me by mine. 
If you ran into me on the street and you need needed a couple bucks for food, I would give it to you. I've literally taken the shirt off my back and given it to somebody before. I'm not tuning my own horn. I'm just saying that I'm trying to practice what God said. I want to do what Jesus said. How can I call him Father and not do anything that he says? I'm passionate about this. I'm passionate about people. I used to not like people at all when I was a sinner. And now I find myself having random conversations with people about the Bible. I just want to do what Jesus wants me to do. And what he wants me to do is this right here. This is it. I've known this since I was 13 years old. I've known it maybe younger than that. But I love you, and I pray for you. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I wish all of you, I pray all of you are well. Regardless of your faith, I hope that you find Jesus Christ. But there's only one way. And that's doing what the Bible says. The King James Version Bible <laughs> I disagree with the Pope. There's not many doors to heaven. There's only one. And even the two Catholics that posted that believe that. So they don't even agree with their own Pope. And one last thing. Jesus is the rock. Thank you for watching and Godspeed.